Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to Easy EDA, a free EDA tool for makers. So what does EDA stand for? It stands for Electronic Design Automation. So EDA software is software that typically does some type of uh, electronic simulation so you can test your circuit concept. It also allows you to do schematic layout as well as choose parts and then also do a PCB layout. So it allows you to take you know, design from concept to manufacturing. And there's a lot of different EDA tools out there. This one though I liked because it was free, so that's why I wanted to introduce it to makers because it's a free tool. And then also it's web browser hosted, so you know it, it does its thing in the cloud so we don't have to worry about what operating system we have and we don't have to worry about if we have the same computer. We can use it across our different computers, we can access it as long as we have an internet connection. So for this demonstration, instead of kind of doing a, you know, a detailed tutorial, which will take a long time, I thought I would run through a real simple project using simulation, schematic, and PCB layout to kind of show you the basics of how this, how this works. And this tool is pretty easy to use. So let's do this and let's see if I can get it done in under 15 minutes. Let's get started. Okay, here is the Easy EDA, I guess you could call it homepage. You can see I created an account with them. So there I am, Forstronics. And for this project, we're just gonna design a simple low pass filter circuit. So I'm gonna press new project. Here we go, and I'm gonna do a new schematic. So it already created a new schematic for me. And if you go back to start, I guess I can show you that, you know, create a new project, create different libraries. You can actually pull in libraries that you have existing if you have software like Eagle or something like I've used in the past. I'll show you an example. But right now we just want to start with a schematic. And you can see some of their schematic symbols or parts that we can pull in. And we'll just use these right now to create a schematic and to create a simple simulation. And we'll later turn that into a PCB. So let me start with, uh, first of all, let me place a ground there and a ground I don't know, here. I'm going to press exit to get out of that component. I'm going to swipe to zoom in. Okay, there we go. I'm going to bring in a source. So this is a voltage source. Connect it there. I'm going to bring in, let me press escape to get out of that. I want to bring in a resistor. So this is one of the parts of our low pass filter. I'll press escape. And then I want to bring in a cap. Press escape. Uh, for my low pass filter, we're going to have our low pass filter. It's cutoff frequency is going to be 100 hertz. So, and, and you don't have to worry about if you don't know too much about filters. This is, won't matter too much for this example. And you'll learn something about filters. So I'm going to make this resistor R1, 160 ohms, and I got these values basically using a filter uh, calculator uh, app on a, on a web browser. So now I want to connect my circuit together. So I'm going to go to the wiring tool. It's pretty simple just to wire. Uh, bam, there's another connection. And then what I want to do for my simulation is I want to add some voltage probes. So these are almost like, think of them as like a, a digitizer or a scope or a DMM measurement so I can sort of measure parts of my circuit with these probes when I do a simulation. So I'm going to name this one VIN and I'm going to name this one VOUT. Now, if you, if you didn't notice, you can kind of change the characteristics of these parts by just clicking on them. And you can kind of see they, they show up on the side here, some of their attributes. And then I can, so this is V1. I didn't want to change its name. I actually just want to change its value just to one, so one volt. Okay. So there I have my simple low pass filter. So this would be the input. This is the output. And I want to simulate this to make sure it's going to work at where I expect it to work, which is 100 hertz. So I have these menu items up here. This uh, They have different things in them. This one's for simulation. This one's if I want to create a PCB, which I'll show later. But two choices here, run the document. I should say three choices. One is the results, but one is run the document. One is run the project. 
So by document, they just mean this schematic showing right here because you can have a project with multiple schematics. So we'll run the document and there's different analysis techniques. I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm going to do an AC one because this is a filter. So we want to see its response over frequency. So we're going to do, uh, I'll just do a linear sweep and let's do, I don't know, a thousand points. Start frequency will be one hertz. Uh, stop frequency, let's do 500 hertz. I'm going to press run. I'm going to get a dialog box here. I'm going to name it low pass filter. Press save. Then I'm going to press run again. And here is my simulation results. So VIN, where I had my VIN uh, probe, is, is here in blue. So you can see this is one volt, because zero and two, it's one volt. Then they do V out and DB, and they do, I think pH means phase, I'm guessing. So you can see I have voltage here, I have frequency here on the Y axis, and then I have DB, which is a measure of gain on the right axis. But really, this is not really that easy to read, I've noticed. So what I did was I went into here uh, and I split these into different panes. So if I go to, if I do pane two here, and let's say I want to change the color to something green, because I like green, and then I hit apply, it's much more clear. So this is maybe something they need to work on a little better, but it's much more clear because here's VN, which is the blue line. Of course, maybe they shouldn't have it right against the top, but it's at one volt, which we would expect. Then here is phase, and they're kind of showing that, and they're basically, when you have reactive components, it can affect the phase of your AC signal, and they're showing that. But here, this is the real thing that I'm interested in. It's this uh, green line. So this is showing dB. So zero dB means at these frequencies, you know, one hertz to 10 hertz, there's, there's really no attenuation or, or no AC is getting blocked. But once we get to uh, down to close to 1K, uh, we can see we're getting attenuation. And then uh, here would be our 3 dB point. So when you have a filter and you have a cutoff frequency, ours is 100 hertz, we expect this to be 3 dB, and that's probably what it is, it lines up. So we, our filter looks correct after we run this simulation. So notice this popped up a new window called Waveform. I can either, I can just leave it there and go back. So now we have our design, it's tested, it's working. Now I want to get rid of some of these parts that I was using for the simulation. So I'll just highlight them and I'm going to press delete to get rid of my probes. Then I also want to get rid of V1 because I'm not going to have that in my actual circuit. I was just testing V1 was serving as my simu simulator or my source for my simulation. Instead, what I want to replace that with, and I may zoom out a bit, is I want to replace it with one of my custom connectors from my Eagle library. So let me show you how to do that. So I've already imported it, but if I wanted to import a custom piece from one of my libraries, and you can see you have multiple choices, I would go to my Eagle, do import. I know it says I've not selected a file. I choose the file for us, of course. You can already see I've navigated to my Eagle library files if you're familiar with Eagle. If, if you're not using a CAD program, don't worry. Uh, this is just kind of show you in case you are where you where you can bring in your own library. So I have a Fort, Forstronics library. Let me open that, import, and then here's all my different schematic symbols that I've made, and then also uh, the packages. So I can choose this and add it to my libraries, and it'll store it on the cloud. So if I go here to my parts. Here's actually what I want to use, this uh, two-pin screw terminal. So I'll put one there, I'll put one there, I'll press escape, and now I actually want to zoom out a bit. Let's see if I can do that, there we go. I'll click on this and to rotate it, I'll use this. That's not the way, I guess that's all right, it doesn't matter. Uh, so I want to connect it, I'm going to move this ground connection so it's there 
I then want to go to my wire, connect it here, and then uh, I'm going to go to my grab tool. I'll leave that there. And I want to rotate it again. I want to rotate it right this time. Okay, I had a little trouble moving it there. So let me do that. I also want to move this down a tick so I can get in there. Okay, you can see that that needs a little work there. Okay. Connect there. I'm going to connect this to here. So there's my low pass filter circuit. I have connectors for the signal to enter and then I have connectors for it to go out. You can imagine though if this was a bigger project you might want to represent some of your circuits on you know discrete pages and you you can do that and have uh, little nodes that connect to the different pages so you can have each one of your circuits on a different page to have your you know design segmented up or module modular so you can sort of work on it independently and reduce its complexity when you're working on it so i have this and i want to generate a pcb so these parts i defined for this resistor and capacitor, uh, Easy EDA is just going to use whatever their you know default things are, and you can actually add more libraries. So they have some of the built-in simple stuff. They don't have as much as something like Eagle, but you can upload like Spark Funds libraries, Adafruit, and some other ones. So you can add to it, and I'm sure they're going to add more and more libraries as as the product grows. Okay. Enough talk there, let's go to convert project to PCB. So if this is the first time you're seeing this, this is sort of the outline of my board and I can resize it by dragging it. Let me actually make it a little bigger. There we go, so this represents the outer edge of my board. This is my layers, if you're new to this, you wanna choose what layer you're working on. So for instance, if you look at a PCB board and you have uh, components on the top, you may have runs on the bottom though, and, and someone had to, to select the different layer. So let me, I think U1 is my first connector, I hope, hope so. I'm gonna put U1 there, put U2 there. And I know R1 is connected to the high side. So what I wanna do is select this so I can, I didn't select it. Select this so I can rotate it. I'll rotate it left. And once again, I'm not going to do everything you need for a PCB. This is more just to, as a very simple example, but so I'm going to put my other connector there. Then looks like I need to flip this around and I'll rotate it one more time. So I, this is the positive end of the capacitor I wanna have up here. So now I, all I need to do is wire it. So I have the top layer selected. So I, for example purposes, I'll wire the top first. So what I'm doing is creating the PCB traces uh, that'll connect the parts together. Now I'm gonna do the bottom. Bam, to the capacitor and then to there. So what will what, happen is what I did with the layers is the red is on top, so when you get your PCB board, you'll see a top trace, and then this one's on the bottom. And the reason you wanna to use top and bottom is if you have a lot of things, so you wanna be able to, you might wanna have runs go over each other, and this is how you would do it. Okay, so there, there we are, and now I want to uh, turn it into a finished product. So I'm gonna do fabrication output. It's gonna name this, I'll, I'll change the name to, I'll just put low pass filter PCB. There we go, it made me save it, so it makes me click on it again, which is weird. And now it takes me to the their PCB store. So as I mentioned, Easy EDA is free. One of the ways they make money is by, you know, you do your design in their software and then you use them to ma manufacture your design. So that's, that's, you know, they have to make money somehow to develop this. This is how they're doing it. It makes it real easy though. Here they have this Gerber view, which is actually real nice. So the Gerber file is what's generated for the manufacturer and it just gives us a preview of the board. So we're looking at the top 
and here's the bottom because we ran one of the traces on the bottom. So that's a nice, nice thing. So they already have the characteristics of our board. If we wanted to go to a different color, we can. This price too is not too bad at all for, for a price. So that's pretty good. So that's all I have for this tutorial. I just wanted to give you a quick overview of Easy EDA. I like the concept because it's free. I like that it's web browser hosted. So if you're a maker, you can leverage this tool. Thank you for listening. And if you haven't checked it out, please check out the Forstronics.com store. I have Arduino boards, genuine Arduino boards on there for sale, dollar off for the rest of the summer of 2016. If you have any comments to share or insights to share related to Easy EDA, please use the comment section below. And thank you for watching.